Hello everyone, we're going to be taking our unit six test tomorrow, which is over right triangles and trigonometry. So today we're gonna to be doing a review over the past couple weeks. So I'm gonna actually work my way backwards. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about are the trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. So a good way to remember these is to think so, Ka, toa, because the S stands for sine, and in the order of the letters here, O and H is the fraction, opposite over hypotenuse, just like it says here. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and then tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so um, the trig ratios themselves are easy to remember, but how do you identify it when it's on a triangle? So it all depends on which angle you are looking at. So because all of these say A, so sine A, cosine A, tangent A, they are all referring to angle A up here. That angle there. So we're going to label the sides of this triangle all in reference to that angle. So the first one, the easiest one hopefully, is wherever the right angle is, so right here it's at C, when you go across, that is the hypotenuse. Okay, then the angle that we're referring to, so in this case, angle A, when we go across, that is opposite because it's on the opposite side of the triangle, which leaves the third side as adjacent. So that's where these words come in here. You're gonna fill in whatever it has there, whether it's an X or a number. Okay, so let's do a few examples. It says to solve for x and round to the nearest tenth. This is all calculator work, so just a warning, your calculator needs to be in degree mode. Calculator in degree mode, or degree setting. It should say degree at the top um, right corner of your calculator. Okay, but once you make sure that's set, then we are good to go. So let's look at our first problem. So there's our triangle. And we always look at the angle that has a number. So in this case, the angle with a number is that 54. So let's go ahead and label the sides in reference to that angle. So here's the right angle. When I go across, that's hypotenuse. My highlighted angle, so when I go across, that's opposite, which leaves adjacent for that third side. So notice how in this triangle, hypotenuse doesn't have anything. It's just blank. There's no x, there's no number. So that means I don't need hypotenuse. I need the trig function that uses opposite and adjacent. So I'm gonna look at my three trig ratios up here. I'm looking for opposite and adjacent. So this one has hypotenuse, can't use that. So this is one. So the only one left is tangent. Okay, so we're gonna use tangent on that problem. Ten of the angle, so in this case it's 54, is equal to opposite over adjacent, so that's gonna be x over nine. Now you need to rearrange it to where the x is by itself. So luckily with these, anytime you have a fraction, so x over nine, we multiply by whatever is at the bottom. So I'm gonna multiply by nine, which of course is gonna get that to cancel out. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So that now leaves me with nine times tangent 54 would give me x. So now that x is all by itself, that tells me that I need to plug this part into the calculator. So again, making sure that you are in degree mode, go ahead and type in 9 times tangent 54. Okay, so when I do this, and we're rounding to the nearest tenth, I get 12.4. So 12.4 is our final answer. Okay, so let's do another example. So here's my new triangle. 
So right off the bat, if my right angle is right here, when I go across, that needs to be hypotenuse. The other two sides, it's all in reference to the angle that has a number. So when I go across from there, that will be opposite, which leaves my third side as adjacent. Okay, so looking at the three sides, adjacent doesn't have anything there, so I don't need it. I'm looking for opposite and hypotenuse. So for my three ratios, that's the first one, opposite and hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine. So sine of our angle, so 46, is opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be 24 over x. So just like the one before, when we're rearranging, since we have a fraction, we're going to multiply by what's at the bottom. So let's multiply by x, and that gets it to cancel out. But we also have to do that to the other side. So now I have x times sine 46 is equal to 24. Okay, so it's good that there's no more fractions, but the problem is that x is not by itself yet. So I want to cancel out this whole part, sine 46. Since they're multiplying, we are going to do the opposite and divide. So that'll get it to cancel, but what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And now I have x equals 24 over sine 46. So this is what we are going to type into our calculator. Again, making sure that our calculator is in degree mode. So let me type this in for us, 24 over sine 46. And I get 33.4. Okay, the next two problems, it's still going to be these triangles. It's still going to be using the trig ratios. But this time it's a word problem that we have to draw our own picture for. A 60-foot ramp rises from the first floor of a first floor to the second floor of a parking garage. The ramp makes a 15 degree angle with the ground. How high above the first floor is the second floor? Okay, so not an artist, but here's the ground. So ground always counts as the first floor. And then this is a parking garage. So let's say, here's my second floor. And then of course all the cars would park wherever. So this is saying that there is a 60 foot ramp that goes from first floor to second floor. So there's my ramp and it's 60 foot. It makes a 15 degree angle with the ground. So I went ahead and labeled that. Now they wanna know how high above the first floor is the second floor. So if this is the first floor and this is the second floor. They want to know this right here. So since that's what we're trying to find, I'm going to make that be x. So there is our little triangle there in our picture. So I'm going to label the sides. The ramp happens to be the hypotenuse here. And if I'm using my 15, when I go across, that x is opposite, leaving the ground as adjacent. But since we're not using adjacent, um, we're only using opposite and hypotenuse. This is just like the one we just did. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So sine of 15 degrees is equal to x over 60. Remember, we're doing opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, anytime you see a fraction, you want to multiply by whatever is at the bottom. That way it can cancel. But what we do to one side, we have to do to both sides. So now I have 60 sine... 15 equals x. Now that x is by itself, I can go ahead and type in that part. Make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. And I am getting that x equals 15.5. And it's measuring in feet. So 15.5 feet. Okay, our next problem, another word problem. A rope attached to the top of a telephone pole is staked to a point 
19 feet from the base of the pole. If the rope makes a 58 degree angle with the ground, how long is the rope? Okay, so here's our ground. Then it's a telephone pole. There's my telephone pole. And then there's a rope attached to the top and staked to the ground. So it's attached to the top, staked to the ground. So as you can see, there is my right triangle. So they tell us that on the ground part, it is 19 feet away from the base of the pole. So down here on the ground, that's the 19. It makes a 58 degree angle with the ground. So right here is our 58. How long is the rope? So our rope was a diagonal. We're gonna label our sides. The rope is the hypotenuse. The ground is adjacent. The pole is opposite. So notice that the pole doesn't have a label on it, so we don't need opposite. We need the ratio that uses adjacent and hypotenuse. So I'm gonna go back to up here and adjacent and hypotenuse is this one in the middle, cosine. So to set this up, cosine of 58 degrees is, remember, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be 19 over x. It's gonna take a little bit of working, but let's get that x by itself. So first I'm gonna multiply both sides by x. That way it can cancel on the right side. And now I have x cosine 58 equals 19. Then we're gonna divide by cosine 58 so it can cancel. But let's do that on both sides so it can stay equal. And now I have x equals 19 over cosine 58. That is what you wanna type into your calculator. Make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. And I get 35.9. And they're measuring in feet again. So that rope is roughly 39.5 feet long. Okay, so these are the four questions that go with our twig ratios. Tomorrow's test, I want to say, is 12 questions. And the first, about five of them, have to do with this stuff. So that's almost half the test. Okay, the next thing we are gonna go back and review some of our old stuff is special right triangles. There's two different types. There's the 40, 45, 90, so that's the one right here on the left. And then there's the 30, 60, 90 here on the right. So starting with this one, the 45, 45, 90, um, a few things, the legs are congruent. And this side is obviously the hypotenuse because it's a, across from the right angle. Okay, and the ratio is whatever the legs measure. And remember, they're congruent. So if one is x, they're both going to be x. To find the hypotenuse, you just get whatever number that is and multiply by square root of 2. Okay, and then for the other triangle, the 30, 60, 90, Across from the right angle is hypotenuse, which means that the other two are legs, but this time they are not the same. There is a short leg and a long leg. Usually it's pretty obvious, but if it's not, short leg is always across from the 30, long leg is across from the 60. So the pattern here, it all starts with short leg. If I know that the short leg is X, let's just say X then the long leg would be that same number multiplied by the square root of three. And the hypotenuse would be that same number x, but this time multiplied by two. Okay, so those are the patterns for our special right triangles. These do show up on the test, so make sure you know these. We have one of each. We're gonna find the value of each variable but this time we're not gonna use our calculator because we don't want decimals. We want it either a whole number or a square root. So on this one, it's a 45, 45, 90 because it says 45 there. K 
Okay, so across from the right angle is always our hypotenuse. Then the other two are legs. Okay, so we just mentioned this, and this kind of triangle, the, hypo the legs are always the same. So if one leg is five, the other leg has to be five. So that X is five. Okay, then for hypotenuse, which is Y, all you have to do is get that number five and multiply by square root of two. So that's all that there is to this one. Just gotta remember, they didn't have to really do any multiplying or dividing or anything. Okay, the next one, this time it is a 30, 60, 90. So we know because they have that side labeled as 60. So this, this one should be 30. Across from the right angle is hypotenuse. Then this is short side. And this is long side. I said side, I should say leg. Let's fix that. Okay. So referring back to my purple thing up here, I have the hypotenuse, it's 22. And from the pattern, hypotenuse is equal to 2x. x stood for the short leg. So if I wanted to find the short leg, I would have to use hypotenuse. In other words, the equation is, I'm actually going to write it up here in part of the notes. Hypotenuse is equal to 2 times the short leg. And we're also going to need the other one, so might as well write it. The long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of 3. So I'm going to start off with this top one. Hypotenuse is equal to 2 times the short leg. And then we're going to fill in what we already know. So we know that the hypotenuse is 22. Okay, this too is just part of the formula. And then for short leg, we don't know what it is yet. They use the letter Y. So if I want to solve for Y here, it's an easy divide by 2. So Y is equal to 11. Okay, but now I need to go back and find the long leg. So the formula says that long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of 3. So let's fill in what we know. Long leg is x. Short leg, it was y, but we just figured out that y is 11. And then part of the formula just says to multiply by square root of 3. And that's it. So there's our two variables, x and y. Okay, let's look at the other side. Next thing up is geometric mean. You just have to remember this formula here. To find the geometric mean of two numbers, you multiply those two numbers and then you square root it. So for our very first problem, it says to find the geometric mean there. We would start off by multiplying those two numbers, so 28 times 7, but then we want to take the square root. So first off, I want to know what is 28 times 7. So let's type that in. And I get... One ninety six. So square root of one ninety six. Okay, then you want to start making your factor tree. So this is an even number. So I would do two times two 
2 times 98. And that's still even, so we could do 2 times 49. And if 49 is not even, but I happen to know that it's a perfect square, it would be 7 times 7. So there's all my small numbers. We're looking for pairs. So I have a pair of 2s, and I have a pair of 7s. So this time there is no single number. Everything gets to go on the outside. So a 2 would go on the outside, a 7 would go on the outside, which 2 times 7 is just 14. So that is our final answer. So it would help if you already recognize that that was a perfect square. I did it, so that's why I did the work. But um, you should always maybe try doing it in your calculator first, and if you get a decimal, then you have to do it by hand. Okay, our next one, I mean, it's a picture, but it's the same thing because that X is the altitude. And the geometric mean theorem that has to do with altitude says that you just find the geometric mean of those two numbers. So X would equal the square root of 20 times 9. So 20 times 9 is 180. So that is not a perfect square. So let's reduce that down. We could do 2 times 90, 2 times 45, 3 times 15, and then 3 times 5. We circle our pairs. So I have a pair of 2s and a pair of 3s. But then this 5 is going to be all by itself inside the house. So things that got circled go outside, so 2 and 3. Things that didn't get circled stay inside. But then let's simplify. 2 times 3 is 6. So there is our final answer. Okay, next up is the Pythagorean Theorem. I feel like we all already know that Pythagorean Theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that one there in the middle. But that only applies when it's a right triangle. If you were to do this and somehow a squared plus b squared was greater than c squared, that would make it acute. And then if it was less than, it would make it obtuse. Always remember, though, that c has to be the hypotenuse or the longest side. So if you're given side lengths, we want to classify what kind of triangle it would be. So we're going to get the two smaller numbers. We're going to square them and add them. And then we're going to compare it to the biggest number, c squared. So that side is easy. I know 10 squared is 100. On the other side, 5 squared plus 9 squared, that gives me 106. OK, so obviously 106 is bigger than 100. So I'm going to go back to my notes up here. And when I have a greater than symbol, so that's going to mean that that's an acute triangle. Acute triangle. OK, let's do the same thing with the next one. The longest side always has to be C. So we need to do 16 squared plus 21 squared. And let's compare that to 28 squared. Well, 16 plus 21 squared is 697. And I'm just putting it into my calculator. 28 squared is 784. So 697 is less than 784. So this time, because it's less than, that makes it an obtuse triangle. Okay, so that's how you would use the formula to figure out what kind of triangle it is. But what if we know for sure that it is a right triangle? That means we're going to use this one in the middle. So the problem right below, there's honestly, there's one exactly like this on the test. It's even the same picture. I just went through and I changed the numbers. That way we could practice. It says to find the perimeter of ADC. So the perimeter of the shaded in triangle. So to find perimeter, we need to know what all three sides are. Um, just to give them names, we'd say this is x, 
this is y, and this is z. So if I wanted perimeter, I would just do x plus y plus z. The problem is, I don't have any of those sides. So let's see if we can figure it out. Well, I know that this whole part is 12, and then I know that this part is 5. So if I do the math, that means that x has to be 7, just to make it add up. 7 plus 5 is going to equal our 12. Okay, so that's first thing. x equals 7. Cool. Now let's try for y. How would I go about trying to figure out what y is? Well, for that one, we could focus only on that bottom triangle, so the one that I'm coloring in blue right now. Remember that hypotenuse has to be the one across from the right angle. So when I go across, that y kind of has to be my c. And then the other two can be however you want. So if I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I'm going to do 5 squared plus 16 squared equals y squared. So the good thing about our calculators is that you can just type this in all at once into nsolve, menu 3-1. And then you would do comma y. And when I do that, I'm going to round to the nearest tenth. I get 16.8. Okay, so we now officially have x. We have y. Now we need to find z. So z is this line here. So that's actually the hypotenuse of the biggest triangle in the picture. I'm highlighting it for you. So Z is the hypotenuse, so that would be our C. That means that 12 would be A and 16 would be B. So again, I'm just going to plug it in. So 12 squared plus 16 squared is equal to Z squared. You can do menu 3, 1 and solve this. But that comes out to... exactly 20. Okay, so now I have all three sides of that triangle, x, y, and z. If I want to find perimeter, I just got to add those up. So 7 plus 16.8 plus 20. And that gives us 16.8. Okay, so the perimeter of that triangle, ADC, would be 43.8. And like I said, pay special close attention to this one. There's a problem like that on the test. I need to change the numbers. Okay, and then last but not least, Area of regular polygons. It all has to do with this area um, equation right here. This little a stands for apothem. And then this capital P stands for perimeter. The perimeter is always the sum of all of the sides. And apothem is, if you have a shape, so I'm just going to do a square, for instance. You start at the center. And you go perpendicular to one of the sides. That's the apothem. That's little a. Okay, so we have two problems to do. We're going to round to the nearest tenth. The first one is this hexagon. So in this case, starting from the center going perpendicular to the side, this is actually already a problem. So we have one step down as far as our equation for area goes. Like we're, we're good with this part. But now how would we go about finding perimeter? So we're going to create a triangle by going to the vertex. So what I want to do is figure out how long this piece is here, the piece that I'm labeling x. Because for perimeter, if I knew what x was, I would multiply that by 2, 
and that would get me the whole side. And then I would multiply that by six because this figure has one, two, three, four, five, six sides to it. And that would get me perimeter. So like I said, I just, I need to figure out what X is. So the good thing about hexagons is we've done plenty of these in class already, so I don't want to work it out all over again. But trust me that this angle here is 60 degrees, which means that this is a special right triangle. We just did this on the front of the page, but the pattern is if you know the short side, you can figure out the rest of it. So on this one, X is actually our short side, or I should say short leg. This blank piece is our hypotenuse, and the apothem is our long leg. So there's a formula that says that the long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of three. So we're gonna fill in everything that we know. We know that the long leg is seven square root three. We know that the short leg is just X. And then the formula says that I need to have square root of three. So if I wanted X by itself, I would divide both sides by square root of three, which it just so happens to cancel on both sides. So X is seven. Okay, so that helps me over here for perimeter because that X I can now replace with a seven. So now I have enough information to plug into the original equation for area. Area, I'm gonna just rewrite it again because it, it helps me keep track, is one half little a times p. So one half, we said apothem was seven square root of three. And then to find perimeter was this equation, seven times two times six. So just type it into the calculator all at once. And when I do it, I get 509.2. And they're measuring in inches. The one on the test is really, really similar to this. It's a hexagon and everything. Only difference is I change this number. Okay, and then one last problem. So it says determine the area of a regular pentagon with a side length of 12.2 and an apothem of 8.3. So I'm gonna refer back to this formula all the time. Area is one half apothem times perimeter. So cool thing is that they told us exactly what apothem is. It's 8.3. So I'm gonna write that down to the side. A is 8.3. Okay, then they tell us that the side is 12.2, so that's good, but we don't have a shape to count the sides of. We're gonna to have to use our vocabulary. A pentagon means that it has five sides. So to find perimeter, it would be our 12.2, times five sides. So we have both things that we need for this equation. So let's just plug it in. So one half times 8.3 times 12.2 times five, and let's see what we get. I get 253.8. Two and there me it didn't tell us the measurement. So that is our answer. There's one pretty much exactly like this on the test. No picture or anything. You're just gonna have to go based off of the words. But it gives you all the numbers, so it should be just an easy plug everything in. Okay, guys. So sorry this went so long, but this is our review for the test tomorrow. Remember that the test is open notes. So all of the notes that we've taken for the past couple weeks but especially this review should help you out. Okay guys, and I will see you for the test tomorrow. Bye.